In this section, I will look at IP version 4 addresses. Even though IP version 6 networking is available and is starting to be used, IP version 4 networking will still be around for a long time to come. In this video, I will first look at what is IP version 4, followed by what is an IP version 4 address. It is important to understand what makes up an IP version 4 address. When IP version 4 was first developed, they introduced the concept of classful networking. Even though this concept has become deprecated over the years, it is still important to understand how it works to have an understanding of IP version 4. Next, I will look at the process of subnetting. Subnetting is taking a large network and dividing it up into smaller parts. Finally, I will take a look at private addresses. Private addresses are IP addresses that you can allocate as you see fit inside your organization. IP version 4 is the fourth version of the IP protocol. It is the default protocol for the Internet and by far the most popular protocol in use today. Version 5 of the IP protocol never got adopted on the Internet. However, IP version 6 is starting to be used. Even so, IP version 4 will be in use for a long time to come and thus it is important that you have a good understanding of the protocol. To understand how IP version 4 protocol works, consider this. The IP and the TCP protocols combine together to provide a complete network solution. TCP is responsible for keeping messages in order and transmitting data when lost, while the IP part is simply responsible for sending packets from one location to another. IP version 4 addresses are 32 bits long. They are divided into four octets of eight bits separated by dots to make reading easier. For example, 192.168.0.1. An IP address identifies your computer and allows other computers to contact yours. Think of it like a telephone number. Telephone numbers have area codes while IP addresses have network IDs to help separate and organize your network into logical parts. Originally, all networking was divided into classes. These classes went from A to E and, depending on the class, determined how many computers could be on that network. These networks can be broken down into smaller parts in a process called subnetting. IP version 4, since it was originally introduced, has been improved and developed. The system of classes puts limits on the way networks could be designed. Since then, Classless networks have been added which allow you to change the way networks are designed. They introduce a system called supernetting which allows you to combine multiple networks together. I will go through all these features individually but first let's start with class networks otherwise known as classful networking. Originally all IP addresses were allocated based on a class. The class used determines the number of hosts that can be deployed on that network. Today, classless networks have become more common and I will cover this later. The remnants of classful networking still exist today and are often used in the discussion of networking, so it is an important topic to know. The first class, Class A, supports 16,777,214 hosts. These are available in 126 networks. The network and host ID cannot be all zeros. The 127 network is reserved for loopback. If you ping any address in the 127 network, you are pinging your local computer. This is useful for testing. The last host ID, or a host ID with all ones, is reserved for broadcast. The next class is Class B. This class has 16,384 networks and 65,534 hosts per network. As you can see, both Class A and Class B have a lot of hosts per network. The original system of allocating IP addresses based on class created a lot of wasted IP addresses. The Class C network has 2,097,152 networks with 254 hosts per network. This network is more suitable for smaller networks. However, you can see that even if you have 100 computers on a network, there is still a lot of wasted IP addresses. Class D is reserved for multicast. Multicast allows you to send one packet to many computers. The last class is Class E. 
This class is reserved and not currently in use. Using classful networking by itself creates a lot of wasted IP addresses. In order to use the address space better, you can use subnetting. Subnetting allows you to break up a network into smaller parts. It is also used to determine which traffic is local traffic and which traffic is for remote networks. Unfortunately, once you start subnetting your network, you will need to start working in binary. To see how subnetting works, consider this example. As you can see, the IP address, subnet mask, and destination IP address are displayed in binary. When the subnet mask is shown in binary, you can see that it is an unbroken list of ones followed by zeros. Ones must always be on the left and zeros on the right. Because of this, you can represent the subnet by the IP address slash number of bits. If I were to show this IP address and subnet mask shown in the example using slash notation, it would be 192.168.10.100 slash 24, as there are 24 one bits in the subnet mask. The subnet mask is used to determine if the traffic is for a remote network or the local network. To do this, the bits from the IP address and the destination address are compared but only with reference to the subnet mask. In this example, the subnet mask is 24 bits, so the first 24 bits of the IP address and the destination IP address are compared. If they match, which in this case they do, the packet is sent to the local network. Now, you may be thinking, I could just look at the first three octets of the IP address and the destination IP address to see if they match. The answer is that you could do this in this case because the subnet mask is a simple one. If I were to change the subnet mask as follows, the subnet is no longer as simple to work out. By using this subnet, I now have divided my original network into 14 smaller networks on which I can put 14 hosts per network. In other words, I have allocated four bits of the host part of the address to the network part of the IP address. If you take the same IP address and the same destination address again and compare the subnet mask against the IP address and destination address, you get the following. You can see that the first four bits in the last octet do not match. Since they do not match, this packet is not for the local network and will be sent to the default gateway. Subnetting gives you a great deal of flexibility and power to break down larger networks into smaller ones. The trade-off is that you need to start doing some binary operations. Using subnetting, you can break away from the limits imposed by classful addresses and divide a network up any way you want. This is called classless interdomain routing. The subnet mask used is called variable length subnet masking. In the real world, Classless interdomain routing is the primary method used and classful networks are a thing of the past. It is important to know about classful networks as they are often referenced in literature and the real world. Classless interdomain routers use a different way to indicate the subnet mask. To indicate the number of bits in the subnet, the router uses a slash subnet mask as shown in these examples. The number indicated after the slash indicates the number of bits in the subnet mask. Using classless interdomain routing, you can also perform what is called supernetting. Supernetting combines multiple networks together to form a larger network. If you had the networks 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.3.0, this would be four Class C networks with 254 hosts in each network. If you need a larger network, you could combine the networking into one using supernetting. By using the subnet mask 22, you can combine the four networks in one. This will give you one network with 1,022 hosts. As you can see, once you start using classless interdomain routing, the IP address space can be divided up any way that you want without any of the limits imposed by classful networking. In the IP address space, there are a number of addresses reserved for private use. You are free to allocate these addresses any way you want. These addresses are not routable on the Internet. A lot of companies use this fact to help with their security. 
If you place all your computers on a private network, a would-be hacker on the Internet cannot connect to any of your computers directly. This is because there is no routing from their computer to your computers. There are three groups of private addresses. The first is Class A, which goes from 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.254. The next is Class B, from 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.254. And lastly, Class C, 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.254. You are free to use all these addresses any way that you want and route them in your organization any way that you want. Just remember that they are not routable on the Internet. On the topic of private addresses, if you start using them, you should be aware of the automatic private IP address system. This system is used by Windows when Windows cannot contact a DHCP to get an IP address. When this occurs, Windows will allocate a random IP address from the network 169.254.0.0. This allows the computer to communicate on a local network. The idea of this system is that you could connect a computer up at home to a switch with one or more computers connected to the same switch. Each computer will automatically allocate an IP address using automatic private IP addressing and be able to communicate with each other. Remember, however, these addresses are not routable on the Internet. If you decide to use private address ranges on your network, bear in mind that you should avoid using this range, otherwise you may get some unexpected results. Look out for IP addresses in this range. When troubleshooting, if you get an address in this range, it will mean that the computer is having trouble accessing the DHCP server. Once you have decided on your network address and subnet masks, there are two more special addresses that you should be made aware of. For example, if I take the following IP address and subnet mask, this would translate to the following subnet in binary and the following IP address in binary. You will notice that the host part of the IP address shown in red is all zeros. This address is not valid and cannot be used. This is often used as the network ID. The other address that is not valid is when the host part of the IP address is all ones. For example, given the following IP address, if I again look at the subnet in binary and then compare it to the IP address in binary, you will notice the host part of the IP address is all ones. This kind of IP address is used for broadcast. If you want to send data to all computers on a network, send it to this address. It is also possible to send a broadcast from another network to this address. You will, however, find that a broadcast like this will often be blocked by the router to that network. This is done as broadcasts like these have been used in denial of service attacks. When working out the subnets for your network and how many hosts you will have, the usable amount of IP addresses can be worked out using the formula 2 to the power of host bits minus 2. If you take the previous example, 2 to the power of 10 minus 2 gives us 1,022 usable hosts. When dividing your networks into smaller parts using subnetting, make sure you factor in some growth for your network. Otherwise, you may find that your network will become full. Remember, with IP version 4, even though it has been around since the 70s, it has been developed and improved since then and will be around for a long time to come. It is costly for a company to change its networking over to IP version 6, and without a driving need, a lot of people will stay on IP version 4 for a long time to come. Also, a lot of network equipment, even though support for IP version 6 is growing, still only supports IP version 4. If you are planning to use private addresses, remember that they are not routable on the Internet. Lastly, when setting up your network plan for growth, networks can often expand a lot larger than how they were originally envisioned. You may think you have enough space now, but think about if your company decided to give everyone an IP-based phone or had a major expansion. In short, IP version 4 is not here to stay, but will be here for a long time, 
so it is worth the time to learn.